Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so in this video we are going to be taking the first steps in modeling the pedestrian bridge that is part of our little project in this little video series. Alright, so the first things first, the planning of those pedestrian bridges is outside the scope of those videos. I'm just going to give you some hints, some pointers that helps you if you are faced with the planning of those projects, uh, we are going to focus on structural aspects rather than planning aspects. A little thing to mention is that I am recording today outdoors, so if there is any external ambient noises, please uh, try to ignore them. Uh, in the planning department of those bridges, uh, usually you would have a certain obstacle you want to pass, let's say a two-laned traffic uh, highway like this. So you have a highway or a, I don't know, a, like a road that has two sides where they are moving basically, and you want to bridge this thing. Now let's put some distances here, just for the sake of argument. Let's say that each one of those pieces is made out of three lanes and each lane is 3.5 meters wide. So 3.5 multiplied by three should be around 10.5 meters. This is the, the width of each of those sides. So 10.5 meters here and 10.5 meters here. Let's say you have a median, some separation here, which is one or let's say two meters in separation here, or 1.5. Let's put here a 1.5 distance, which is the little median separator between the two sides. And let's say that there are no restrictions on both sides because, I mean, the restrictions will play a role in how your bridge will look. But let's say that we have no restrictions on either side of the road. Uh, let's assume that we have a predetermined bridge height of being 6 meters. It's not the clearance actually. So the 6 meter height is basically the height of the deck slab. The clearance is lower. This is the height of deck slab. The clearance might be lower and this needs to be calculated because the clearance is basically uh, the height of the deck minus the girder minus any um, signs you want to overhang from that bridge. Of course, this is something that needs to be prepared and planned by the entire team. I'm just giving you some pointers that you should or take into consideration when doing this bridge. Uh, in this project, we are going to model three bridges. I will do two today and continue the modeling of the steel bridge next time. Because yes, we're going to have both reinforced concrete. Uh, it could be pre-stressed, depending on what robot can do. So we will have concrete and steel bridges. Now, how am I planning this? I am planning to have a little structure here. That's my plan now. Of course, it should be planned before. This is only a little introduction for you, just to give you some ideas. I'm planning to have a small structure here, a small structure here, and a bridge structure spanning between those two structures. So it depends on what we have. It might be or might not, might not be supported here. It depends on what I want to do later. So this support is a little question mark. The idea of do can we support or not, now, this is something I want you to think about. There is no quick answer for this. The question of do we need to support the bridge in the center or not depends on one, what kind of clearance you have between the two uh, roadsides. Two, is it feasible to support here? Meaning, um, like you should make a little preliminary design to check the cost of an unsupported, I mean mid-span. No mid-span support for the bridge versus a mid-span support for the bridge. A quick cost analysis because uh, yes, I know that the superstructure deck slab girders will be cheaper if you support it uh, in the center. But of course, supporting something means that you have suddenly a pier or a column plus a foundation cost. So this needs to be analyzed. There is no quick question for that. I'm just telling you the ideas that you should uh, keep into your mind when you are part of a group that needs to design a bridge. Those ideas will repeat themselves when I'm talking about the highway bridges. That's why I'm starting with a pedestrian bridge because I can like talk about all those nuances right now here and skim over them later when I talk about the highway bridges. So this is a good starting point. Why do I plan a structure here? Now the structure modeling itself I may not include to be honest but I will just tell you about this. Maybe it depends on the time I have. Why do I plan a structure here? I plan a structure here because I want this to be a, I mean for the lack of the better word, I want this to be um, handicapped friendly meaning that I am planning to have here an elevator, an elevator shaft, and uh, a staircase around it. Of course, you can just not care about this, and you can basically just make a bridge like this with an, a, a staircase like this, 
just a simple staircase and just end the entire story. I want this to be handicap friendly, that's why I'm making a substructure with an elevator there. Now please notice, the design of the substructure here is not part of my project today. So I will, not, I will only model it and just give you some ideas about it. I will not be diving deep into the design of the substructure. This is almost everything of my plan. It's very important for me to outline the plan for you so that you can follow when I start um, modeling that stuff. Okay, so with that being said, let's dive into robot. Now in robot, I'm going to make my structure stories and I will delete all and add me two stories. I will add from zero to three meters and I'll add from three to six meters. So I have two stories. In the structural axis here, I'm gonna provide axis for the bridge now and the supporting structure will be accessed later. I'll talk about that later. So at zero, I have one structural axis. I need to define where my zero, zero is. So if I say that this point in orange is my zero, zero, well, the column starts before the zero, zero because it's not gonna be on the edge of the road. And I need some clearance spacing here. I will assume one meter clearance spacing from the center of the column to the side of the uh, bridge, from the center of the column, not from the surface, from the face. I start at zero, one meter is the side of my road, and then I have a road of 10.5, so I have a nice trick here, repetition one, 10.5, enter, and now it's adding. It's a cool trick, you can pause the video and check it out again. Then I have 1.5 meter spacing, and another 10.5, and finally I have a one meter spacing for the column. This is my x-axis grid. For my, for my y-axis grid, I'm going to assume that, now first of all, there is no maintenance because I'm not providing any means for a maintenance car to move here. I should have because it's fun to see how the maintenance car is modeled. Uh, for the future, because next video I will be talking about the influence lines, so I will be adding a car even if it's not necessary here. It's impossible to have a maintenance car here, but I will add it anyway. I will give another disclaimer next time when I add it. I hope I don't, I don't forget. If I do forget, I have the editor who is going to definitely, uh, yeah, try to salvage my failures by adding some red text below. Right? Isn't it? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So the y-axis, I'm going to assume it's make it two meters. Zero to two meters. And I need one meter because this is the center of my pier. I'll apply that and close, and now I have the axis for my bridge, basically, as you can see. I do think that I need a column. I mean, this like, looks scary, 22 meters. Priestess concrete can span that, but I don't know. So I have my structural axis here, and I'll basically start modeling. Now, notice the beams used for highway bridges and normal bridges are not similar to the beams used in everyday life. Especially when you are dealing with a pre-stressed concrete bridges, there are some standard uh, sections that are called the ASHTO PCI standard bridge sections. There are basically six types currently uh, available for those standard sections, and those are things we use in bridge design because those are readily made, like at least, in, at least where I work. When I say standard PCI 5, Everybody knows what I'm talking about. It's not like, hey, let's assume this or that. So for now, I will make a placeholder uh, section. For now, I'll just define me a placeholder section. Later, I will add uh, a section definition for the PCI um, girder. So let's go for a beam now. Uh, that's not a big deal, actually. I'll just take me a reinforced concrete beam. I told you we will talk about the steel. This is going to be a long video series, I'm pretty sure. Like, at least I need another four episodes for this. Anyway... For the width, I'm going to say 350. For the height, I'm going to say 700 millimeters. This is just a placeholder. In the end, I will have to change this into a standard section later, but I will not talk about this right now because I will teach you how you can define your own section by a very cool section definition tool here because you need this. I will not do this right now because you need this as the sections in the code, uh, sections in robot do not have any of those cool abilities because you can see that the PCI girder needs more abilities than just what robots provides you here. So, so this section definition tool will be part of later. So I'll just click on beginning from here to here. I think I messed up. I need to add a point here in the X grid. So yeah, so 11.5, 0 0.75. Okay, now I have the center, fine. All right, so uh, back again. Let's start with our beams. 
one click here. I mean, there is not, I mean, for the interested viewers, I don't think I'm offering too much new stuff today. Like, I hope you're not, dis you're not disappointed, but you know, sometimes, sometimes there are some dull episodes in this series because I mean, come on, I need to, I need to model this, right? I need to model this, but I try to keep this interesting by telling you, hey, in the future, we're going to do this and that. So I have modeled my two beams. I need to support them. I'm going to support them by a, I have two options. I can support each column alone or support them both by a pier. I'll just support them by a pier that is basically a concrete wall. So I'll go here and click on the thickness 30. I don't think this is enough. I'll take thickness 50. So thickness 50 or 500. I'll add that. Close and use it. So if you do this, you're a little bit wrong. If you click one, two, three like this without horizontal. One, two, three. It works fine. But this is not accurate because there is no way and you shouldn't support a beam on the very edge of a wall. This causes high stress concentrations. I mean, if you go to Google very quickly and say RC pier, you see that for a hammerhead pier, for example, there is always some sort of clearance between the beam. And this is, of course, a highway bridge now between the beam and the edge of the pier. Now, for me, because I do not have such a big width, I'm not going to go for a hammerhead pier design. I will talk about this later in the highway bridge, hopefully. I hope I don't forget that. Which means, once again, that I have to go to my axis. You can see that sometimes I mention some stuff that can only be seen when I go through this dull, uh, basically, modeling issue. So, contour, thickness 500. I will click here for... And click here five for good measure. Close it. Go to front. Should be a surface. Yes. Okay. Nice. Okay. So basically, we have our first wall, and has a thickness. And I click this and basically copy that if I want. I just click on edit, edit, copy. Show you how. I just want to copy it. So I copy it from here to here, and then everything should be fine, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna support that. It depends on your support. I will basically assume it's a spread footing. Oh. If I assume it's a spread footing, I have only one meter here. This is gonna work. There are some nuances I'm thinking aloud now. You see, when I decided to have one meter clearance between the bridge and the house here, I forgot to mention that there are some nuances with regard to foundation, because later you will have to make a footing for this column, and the footing is now limited by one meter distance you had here. So I don't think my one meter was correct. I regret that, so I will quickly Move it, edit, edit, move or copy, I move that, I move it, uh, I move it another meter in the x axis, so 1, 0, 0. I'll execute this, so now it's moved. And of course, I will have to move that thing. And now I have a problem that the beams are not connected correctly, so I think there is an uh, extend command. There we go, extend. Select the boundary object thing, so I'll select that. And now to number here, I click. Yeah, it does extend, fine. Nice, it works nicely. And then I'd select this, basically, and then go to the object and select here and here. And now I fixed my problem without remodeling the entire thing. I'm outside my uh, grid, but that's okay. I mean, we know why we did that. I'll add me a pin support here and add me a pin support here. There is a very, there is a very long ongoing war between should we pin or fix stuff? And there is no answer for this. I, had, I have talked about this before in the previous video. I want to reiterate that for my new viewers here. Yeah, the idea of fixing versus pinning a support depends on what you assume about your support. If your support is big enough and strong enough to not allow any rotation, then a fixed support is adequate. If the support is a little small that might allow some degrees of rotation, then you would pin that thing. Uh, for me, if I have a raft foundation, which is a big, big foundation, a slab foundation, a raft foundation, then I would assume a fixed support here immediately. If I have a pile foundation, I would assume a fixed support here. If I have a spread footing foundation, then I don't know. Truly, I don't know. Like, I am not sure if I should fix or pin it, because uh, it depends on how big my foundation is. So I will leave this as pinned and go on with my life. All right. So. Are we finished? No, because we are going to assume this is my first bridge and there is a slab missing here. So let's slab it. Oh, this is going to be spicy now. You see, if I slab my bridge, okay, this, is, this, needs, this needs paint again. Let, let me tell you what I'm thinking now. You see, I'm thinking as follows, because it's very important, and I cannot stress this more. I'm sorry if I keep stressing this, but it's very important that whatever you put in robot is what reflects real life. 
You see, this is now the uh, side view. So I have two options in designing this bridge. I could uh, put my beams above the pier like this and then put the slab on top of that like this, the slab of the bridge. That's option one. Option two is I could put it like this and then put the beams like this, which means that the slab is going to touch the pier like this. And there is a difference because if the slab touches the pier, it means that the slab is supported by the pier, near the pier, and supported by the beams otherwise. If I put the slab above the girders, it means that the slab doesn't touch the pier, which means that this connection should not take place. This is usually what we'll do in highway. We usually support it by a column. I'll do this for the pedestrian bridge. I'll assume that the uh, girders are basically top surface of the girder is the top surface of the uh, pier, which means that um, I basically select those things, geometry, additional attributes, and select the offset. Of course, there is a video about offsets. It's going to be linked up above. So I'll offset this to the, sorry, to the lower, to the upper flange to make this exactly like this. So this is my assumption now. Of course, I, the other assumption I will be doing in the highway bridge is this, where I put this above the pier. But now I will do this assumption for this bridge. So, okay, fine. So now this is my pedestrian bridge and this is my assumption. And now I will basically uh, take my uh, slab and slab that bridge. So now for the slab, I'm going to use thickness. I will use thickness 250. And this is just a preliminary assumption. In the end, when you design your slab, it's your responsibility to check the deflections and whatnot. Of course, those things are things that I usually keep for the viewer to do because I'm trying only to show you the more advanced types of things that you should take into account. So I click one, two, three. And of course, I can see your question. Like, why didn't you slab this the whole way? I'll come to that because there is another cool bridge I will do. Wow, there is a lot of things I'm doing in this pedestrian bridge. It's kind of nice. All right, so I have my slab. And later, I will basically talk about the loads that are going to be applied on the slab. I will make something cool. So I click on display and go to, go to panels and select the thickness, apply. And now you can see the thickness. Later, I will load it. For now, I'll just click it here because in loading, I have much more to talk about. I click it here, move and copy it, and move it in the y-axis, I don't know, 20 meters. So this is my first reinforced concrete bridge. I didn't load it. I'll talk about this later. So thickness 500, going to this, creating a rectangle. I could have copied it, but this time I want to draw it again. So now we have that. All right, everything seems to be nice. I didn't support that, so let's support it right now. Now this is where the place where I start uh, running my analysis. So let's run the analysis blindly, which means that there will be a self-weight assumed and the analysis will be run blindly. Yes, it's separate structure, I know, so let's go for it. And it seems the mesh is a little bit odd here. Oh, there was, there was, a, there was a request from my dear subscriber, Donald Khani, about how you can see the mesh. I'll, I think if I have time in this video series later, I will talk about it. For now, I'll just focus on this now. Okay, so diagrams for members, I quick double check, MY, apply. I should see some sort of squiggly squiggled moment diagram. That's the case. It's a squiggly line diagram. Um, that makes absolute sense because you have shells here and the finite element shell has some discrepancies when it loads the beam. This is totally normal. This seems to be a continuous beam moment diagram. So far, so good. I think we are golden now. All right, so multiple, millions of nuances. This is gonna be a long video, trust me. So let's delete the mesh first. Let's select this and I'll edit, move and copy. And I will copy this two times at 20 meters in X. So 20, no, in Y, zero, 20, zero. I'll execute this and now I have to copy it. In one copy, I want to make a cladding. So I'll delete this and I'll replace this by cladding. So geometry, claddings, because of the nuance of the bending wood diagram. I will tell you what the difference is between them in a moment. So, uh, according to what I see here, this is going to be a one-way slab. So, I will select a one-way slab. One-way in X. Okay, fine. Rectangular. Now, uh, I need the grid here. I totally messed up, right? Okay, so I make me a cladding here. I don't have the grid, so I create my grid. I can also click here. Maybe in X, I should add me a point here. Hit the apply button. I just quickly had to amend my structural uh, axis. And this is a way of doing it very quickly. All right, so let's go to cladding, shall we? So let's go to cladding, click on geometry, cladding, and select one way X. It means that the X axis is the load distribution axis. So the first axis comes like this. 
So I intentionally drew my x-axis in this way because I want to distribute my load in this way. So one like here and close the cladding. I have one very odd cladding to be honest. What shows if it's right or wrong is the analysis. So let's just go on with it. I will, I will show you how to double check your cladding later. I'm just a little bit annoyed by those little triangles that I see. A cladding doesn't have a self for it, so I'll have to add me a very quick dummy load. So negative one in the Z, just a dummy load because I want to see the moment diagrams. Okay, so let's run the analysis. Yeah, okay, fine. It was able to load the beams correctly and you can see that there are no squiggly lines because the cladding calculates an equivalent load. This is a finite element load. This is an equivalent load. I have spoken about this before in one of my plate videos. Um, but uh, to show you this, right click, uh, display, and you go to loads. You go to load distribution regions, and you want to go to generate it automatically. You click OK, and you can see the distribution regions as well as the loads that were created. So the cladding does create perfect loads. Here, no loads were created because the finite element itself is what was creating the loads, the deflections themselves. Anyway, this is a cleaner version. You would think, okay, this is so clean, why not keep a cladding? Yeah, you see, because if you have a cladding, then you do not have access to the moments inside the deck slab. So if you go, let me just show you. If you go to, first of all, let me just remove this load distribution region. So, and now let's go to um, results maps. And let's select moment XX, for example. You can see that those have results and maps, but this doesn't. It doesn't have a result or map. It seems it's basically invisible to the application, and that is correct. The reason why it seems to be invisible is because you did not use any mesh to analyze this. So there is nothing to be analyzed. Thus, there is no results for this. The implication of this being, you cannot just click and design the reinforcement of the deck slab because you didn't analyze the deck slab and you don't have access to any results of the deck slab. So using claddings might make your beams look nice and crisp, but will sacrifice the ability to design the deck slab later. The second thing I wanted to do here, I didn't talk about the loads because there is more to be talked about. All kinds of stuff you need to add as loading. I didn't do that yet. Squiggly lines because of the finite element mesh distribution. I want it to be less squiggly. Fine, you click here, you go here, basically to the drop preferences. You go to your mesh, select a finer mesh. There still will be squiggly lines, but less so. And uh, yeah, you get a less squiggly line, I hope. Yeah, you see, it's, it's still squiggly, but it's better. You see, there's a little nuance here. Uh, it seems that my beam is not simply supported, neither here nor here. There is no simply supporting happening here. Now, is this a problem? In reality, you might want to simply support your beam rather than to make your beam continuous. This is especially the case when you have a loading scheme like this. Uh, when you have, for example, a uh, girder on top of your pier, then there might be a ruler or a pin involved rather than a fixed support here. When you have this assumption, you could really have a fixation here somehow. You could also not have fixation by, and this is really technical now, by uh, having a pier that looks like this, a two-step pier, this is the side view, where the beam comes in like this, and the slab comes above the beam like this. There is a lot of things that need to be taken into account. This bridge configuration means that you have a roller support between the girder and the pier, and you may have roller support between the deck slab and the pier. You need to think about this. There is no way out of it. There is no quick magic thing I can do to you to make this perfect and make this work. This is my baseline structure. I'll talk about this later. For this structure, I will assume that the pier is cast monolithically with the girder, meaning that the girder and the pier have more transfer in between them. However, I will assume that the deck slab is not cast monolithically with the pier, which means that the deck slab shouldn't have a moment transfer between it and the pier, which means that the girder is not released because it is connected with the pier monolithically, but the slab is released because it's not connected monolithically with the pier. You think I'm making things up, but this is really what you should do in bridges. I'll go to geometry and go to additional attributes and select linear releases. Now, linear releases are similar to normal releases, but in that being that it's on the entire edge of a beam. 
of a plate. So I select the pin, it's already defined, it releases the Rx, which is the rotation around the x-axis. The x-axis being the tangential axis to the edge. So this is what I want, and I basically select this uh, here. I need to be very careful in my selection. I select the Dex Lab here and click on it, and now I have a release here. Also, I select the Dex Lab here and click on it, which means I have... Did I click? I didn't. Okay, wait, I need to apply this first. And now I click here once again and try to... And there we go, yes. So now I applied two releases, linear releases on the Dex Lab. So what is this structure? This structure is now a structure where the beam is connected monolithically with the pier, meaning that there is moment transfer between the beam and pier, but the deck slab is not connected monolithically with the pier, which means that there is no um, moment transfer. Now, if you connect a beam monolithically with the pier, you are going to use a reinforced concrete beam rather than a pre-stressed beam, because uh, you need to be able to pre-stress the beam when you cast it monolithically with the pier, this will cause real practical issues in launching your pre-stressed tendons if you use a post-tensioned pre-stressing reinforced concrete design. It's a lot to unpack here. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible and extend and expand on this knowledge while I'm doing the video series. This is going to be a long video series. I only can give you some spoilers for later. I cannot give you everything in one video. Now here, this is a cladding. I don't care because the cladding is not analyzed. All right, so this is my first two optional bridges. My second bridge here, I'll do it like this. So let's spice things up, shall we? So I'll go to geometry, additional attributes to offsets, and offset this to the lower flange, basically. It looks like, it seems that I messed up. It seems that the slab here is not connected to the column. But relax, it is connected to the column. This is only a visual thing. So if I, if I move my beam upwards, if I put it on the pier, this means now that, first of all, I will assume that the beam is not going to be cast monolithically with the pier, meaning that I need releases now. So well, I'll go to geometry, additional releases, and select the pin-pin release, because, ah, this is once again important. I will assume that those are two simply supported spans, not a single continuous span. So I'll assume that my two beams are simply supported for each of the two spans. So I need a pin-pin release here. So I'll select them all and click a pin-pin release for everything. Uh, now notice, I might have difficulties in the analysis because it might hate the fact that I have two pins on the same point. It might tell me that there's too many excessive releasing here. The second thing I have here is that suddenly I do not have any loading between this and this. There is no load transfer between uh, this deck slab and this pier. I would not have the problem if I'm using claddings, to be honest. This would not be the case. But if I use a finite element deck slab, then there will be moment transfer. Now let me run. Let me run the analysis to show you what I mean. See, we are doing all that kind of stuff before we are talking about the loads even. <clears throat> what do we see? Let's go to the mid diagram and take a look. Let's increase the diagram size and take a look. You see, although I asked the beams to be released, there is still moment transfer. So what gives? The reason why I have moment transfer is because I have not yet released the deck slabs. I need to release deck slabs to continue. You see moments on the beam, although it was released, because the beam was released, and that is true, but the slab was not released. And there is moment transfer between the slab and the pier, and the slab is supported by the beam, and that's why there is also moment transfer between the slab and the beam. So there is something missing here, and I guess the dear viewer now already sees where, where things are going. The things are going to be as follows. I'm going to go to geometry to select linear releases now, and now I will go to the slab itself. Of course, I will have to remove the finite element mesh to see, so I'll remove the finite element mesh very quickly. And now I see the slabs as they are. Of course, there's multiple things selected, and to have a better view, I will remove this cross section right now. And I'll go to, once again, geometry, um, additional attributes, and select linear releases. So now I will try very carefully to select the correct one, and I select this, that's correct. And here too, I need to release that. 
and hit an apply button. And now you know why I split my uh, slab into two. In the very beginning of my uh, modeling, I split the slab into two because I was predicting that this will be happening. I was predicting that I would need to release both edges. So I think I misselected the deck slab here. So I'll go once again to geometry, properties, additional attributes, select linear hinges. Now carefully select the slab. I'm just trying my best to select it correctly. So give me a second. So eight, yes. All right. So I'm still worried about having excessive deflection, uh, excessive releases. So I run the analysis and take a look what will happen. It's unstable, fine. It seems that I have messed up. So first of all, to reiterate, and I'm not going to video edit this because I want you to see how you can deal with things that seem unstable. I think it's unstable because I just created a house of cards, to be honest, because now this is roller supported. Sorry, this is pin supported. This is pin supported. This is pin supported. And everything here is released. So I think I just made a house of cards, meaning if I push on the right, the entire structure will collapse. And this is, I think, what the instability was about. So first of all, now I am forced to make this a fixed support because of stability issues, which means also that I have to make sure that when I implement this in real life on the, on the, on the field, that my... Um, that my foundation is large enough to cause the fixation to happen because this would be a house of cards having everything released here so right regretting this i will go to my uh, supports once again and select a fixed support now to try to uh, alleviate the problem of instability and this also of course means that i'm now responsible on the field to make this happen all right so running the analysis now i don't think i will have instabilities but i still have the problem of moments I still have instabilities, right? Okay. I still have some instabilities. And I also, it seems that everything I tried to do in releasing didn't work. So I think I over-released my structure. So first of all, let me just go here and reduce the mesh because I want to be able to see. So let's go back to course. I will make it fine later. And I'm going full analysis uh, expert here. I just want to see exactly where the instability is. RZ, rotation around Z, so rotation around the vertical axis. I released, I think I over-released my structure. First of all, let me remove all releases. This is how I troubleshoot. I remove everything from everywhere. Oh, it seems I had one extra, oh, see? It seems I had one extra release here that messed up my calculation. I don't know, let's keep trying it. So, so I removed all my releases and run the analysis again. Let's run the analysis again to see what will happen. Now I'm expecting it to be perfectly stable now. So is it stable? Yes, it is, no problem at all. Once again, I have my squiggly lines. I've talked about this before and I have moments as it should be. So let's start releasing things. I want to release the slab in the edge. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to results maps and select the MXX map, the problem is that the moments here are basically diluted because you have higher moments on this direction. And this is the one that will take the scale. So it seems I have a negative moment here as it should be. And to make sure you see the moment, I go to geometry and select something called analysis uh, results panel cuts and basically cut my panel here to show you so if you cut your panel parallel to xz and hit here and click apply you can see that there is indeed moment as you can see in the panel cut so there is no moment releasing in the panel itself all right also in the edge of the panel there is moment so let's start let's slow play this one by one geometry additional attributes uh, linear releases and I want this to be released, only this. I click that, uh, hit the apply button, I want 9. Hit the apply button, yes. And now I have a release here, it seems. So let's run the analysis. And yes, indeed, I don't see any moment in the panel on the edge. This is exactly what I want. Now what about here? Here I have some moments, so I need to release them too. So taking care with my clicks, I click the correct slabs this time, hopefully. Okay. So let's run the analysis now. I should not have any negative moment on the panel cut itself. So it's still stable and I see no moment on the, on the edge here. This is perfect. The moment you see here is due to the interaction between the slab and the beam itself. This is totally normal. But on the edge, there is no moment. That's exactly what I want. What about here? I need to once again go to linear release and basically click the correct uh, slab. All right, so it seems you managed to mitigate the problem of the mesh here. What about the beams? So now let's go to releasing the beams. This time I'm gonna try to do it right. And now I have releases on my beams. If I run the analysis now, the beams should not see any moments, I hope. 
according to my understanding of finite element, moment transfer should be minimal. There should be some slight moments here, but not much. Yeah, see, there is some slight moments here due to the finite element itself, because it's an approximate method, by the way. But in the end, what counts right now, uh, and also there is moments because of offsets, check out the offset video. Uh, the offset video, uh, the moments are also, look, the moments are also produced due to the fact that you have axial forces that are offsetted. But still, at the very edge here, the moment is zero. So it seems that we are mitigating some problems here. Also, on this edge, the moment is zero on the beam. It's different than its counterpart here because here you had moment as you can see. What about this? Well, let's pin those two guys. And this is the last thing I will be doing in this video today. Yeah, I think I don't. I think this works now. No uh, instabilities and moments zero at the ends. You see some spikes in moments this is due to the finite element method, also due to offsetting. But on the edge, there is, I mean, look at the difference here. Look at the difference here. You can see clearly the difference between the negative moment you had here and the negative moment you have here. This is insignificant in comparison. So yeah, this is what I wanted to cover very quickly in this first video about uh, bridges. Now, I know it might be a little bit disappointing for you. You were hoping to see a full bridge today, but I won't try to explain all the nuances related to bridge design, uh, analysis because it's more important than just dishing out stuff on robot. Anyway, uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you liked it. It was beneficial for you. If you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, subscribe, and comment, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video.